Commissioner, the next witness is Mr Pinto. Yes, yes, Mr Pinto in court. Would you be good enough to come into the witness box, Mr Pinto, and before you sit down, may I ask you whether you would prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Oh, an oath. An oath. Good enough to swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Commissioner. Your name is uh, Maurizio Pinto. Yes. Your professional address is 10 Shelley Street, Sydney, in the state of New South Wales? Yes. You currently hold the position of Executive Manager of the Office of the Superannuation Trustee within Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited? Yes. You've received a summons to come and give evidence at this Royal Commission? Yes. Do you have the original of the summons there with you? Yes, I do. I tend to that, Commissioner. Exhibit 5.163, summons to Mr Pinto. Mr Pinto, you have prepared two statements to assist the Royal Commission, correct? Yes. One dated the 5th of August 2018? Yes. And one dated the 6th of August 2018? Yes. I think you had a few minor corrections you wanted to make to your first statement, the one of the 5th of August 2018, is that correct? Yes. Um, I think the first one was at page 21, paragraph 25. Commissioner, I might just lead here if that's yes, all right. Yes. Uh, in the last line, there's a reference to uh, the exhibit of tab 8A at confidential exhibit MP2. Should that in fact be exhibit MP1? Yes. Thank you. Secondly, if you could turn to page 50. At paragraph 46, in the last line, there's a reference to uh, tab 22 of confidential exhibit MP2. Should that, in fact, be a reference to tab 24? Yes. If you could uh, next make if each of these amendments as we go and initial them as you go, Mr Pinto. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, sorry. Do go on. And then if you could turn, please, to page 63, Mr Pinto, paragraph 53. In the fourth last line, there's a reference to tab 22 of exhibit MP2. Should that, in fact, be a reference to tab 25? Yes. If you could make that change, please. Finally, at page 67, paragraph 67, in the third line, where it refers to tab 30 of exhibit EAC 1, should that in fact be a reference to tab 27? Yes. Subject to those corrections, Mr Pinto, are your two statements true and correct to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes. Uh, I tend to those two statements, Commissioner. The statement of 5 August 18 of Mr Pinto will be Exhibit 5.164. The statement of 6 August of Mr Pinto uh, will be Exhibit 5.165. Please, Commissioner. Thank you. Yes, Mr Hart. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Pinto, Suncorp Portfolio Services is the trustee of the superannuation fund operated by Suncorp? Yes. And... At some point in time in the past, Suncorp Portfolio Services invested all of the assets of the trust in life insurance policies issued by another Suncorp entity? Not all of the assets, but some of the assets, yes. And that was invested in what's referred to as SLSL, is that right? Yes. And that's Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And 
is it still the case that there are assets of the fund invested with SLSL as issuer of life insurance policies? Yes. And those policies then provide that SLSL, the issuer of the life insurance policies, will then invest that money in other ways for the benefit of the members? Yes. And in addition, SPSL, which is the trustee, has other assets of the fund which it invests in other ways? Yes. And how does it invest those other monies? Uh, so it, it invests them through uh, the Suncorp Group Trusts, for which Suncorp Corporate Services Proprietary Limited is the investment manager. And who is the trustee of that trust? Suncorp Funds Proprietary Limited. Okay. And there is, and we should be clear about this, I refer to it as if there's a single fund. There's actually two trusts. There's the Suncorp Master Trust and the Suncorp Pooled Superannuation Trust. Yes. And SPSL, that is Suncorp Portfolio Services, is the trustee of both the Suncorp Master Trust and the Suncorp Pooled Superannuation Trust? Yes. And again, so that we can attempt to understand this arrangement, what proportion of the assets are invested in life insurance policies with SLSL? So I, I don't think I have that information readily at hand. Has it changed over time? Yes, it has. Has there been a decrease in the amount of assets invested through the life insurance policies and an increase in the amount of assets invested through the group trust? Yes. And there's then a tax surplus. You know what I'm talking about when I talk about the tax surplus? Yes. And the tax surplus arises in this way, as I understand it, that Suncorp Portfolio Services has to collect 15% of every superannuation contribution and remit that to the tax office. Where that contribution is a taxable contribution, yes. But Suncorp Portfolio Service, as trustee, also has available to it certain tax deductions? Yes. And those tax deductions, for example, will arise from insurance premiums or certain types of insurance premiums? Yes. And the consequence is that Suncorp Portfolio Services, as trustee of the superannuation fund, ends up with a surplus where it has collected the 15% of taxable contributions, but it doesn't need to remit all of those, the full value of that 15% of taxable contributions to the tax office. So by way of context, the um the Suncorp Master Trust receives two types of um, contributions, if you like. The first type are the taxable contributions. In that example, contributions tax is deducted at 15% from the taxable contribution and a rebate is then paid back to the member for the benefit or equivalent to the benefit of the tax deduction that has arisen from the fund claiming 
a deduction for the insurance premium. However, there are instances where members who are incurring insurance premiums in their accounts are not making taxable contributions to their accounts. Um, so they could be making non-taxable contributions or they could be making a rollover or they could be funding the cost of the premium through the existing account balance. In that scenario, no contributions tax is deducted from the member's account. Um, however, when the fund does submit its tax return at the end of the year, it is entitled to claim a tax deduction for the premiums. And it is in that scenario that the, the credit that is received by the fund is held in the contributions tax surplus of the fund. And the consequence is there ends up being a pool of money that the trustee has collected as something that it would need to remit to the tax office, but which it doesn't need to remit to the tax office. No, I don't think it needs to remit tax to the tax office because the, the monies that have been, been used to effectively fund the cost of the premiums and non taxable right, Let me put it back to you in a slightly simpler way. There is an amount that the trustee has to remit to the tax office. Each year it has to remit tax to the tax office. Yes. And each year, at least for the last five years, Suncorp has ended up collecting more money for the purpose of remitting it to the tax office than it in fact ends up needing to remit to the tax office. No, I don't think that it's collecting more money that it needs. Um, it's, it's more that in relation to... Can I put it into the passive voice and see if that helps? There is, in fact, more money collected than needs to be remitted. I'm, I'm not sure that I necessarily agree with that, with that position. It's not, you, your point is it's not actively collected. Correct. Is that the issue? Correct. It's just that there is, let me use a different verb. There is an amount allocated to be remitted to the tax office and that amount ends up being greater than the amount that actually needs to be remitted to the tax office. I think to my way of thinking, the, the fund is entitled to tax deductions which give rise to a refund. Yes. Um, so it's not that it's necessarily collected more tax, it's more that because it's claiming a tax deduction for the insurance premiums, that in turn gives rise to a tax refund. All right, let's, let's call it a tax refund. I think in your papers you refer to it as a tax surplus. Yes. But you mean the same, when you talk about a tax refund, you mean the same thing as the tax surplus. Is that right? Yes. And one way of dealing with that refund or surplus would be to return it to the members. Yes, that would be one potential option. And that's certainly what many other super funds do? I'm not, not sure what other funds do. 
you don't return it to the members. No. <coughs> what you do is pay it, that is the trustee pays it to SLSL, Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. Yes. And it's done that at least as far back as we have looked, which is only back to 2013. Yes. And it's done that pursuant to an agreement that was entered into between Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited and Suncorp Portfolio Services? Yes. And that agreement, maybe if we bring that up, that might help. Can we bring up sun.1506.0018.0001? So this is a board submission to Suncorp Portfolio Services dated the 18th of April 2013. Yes. And you see its title is Payment to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited of the FY12 Contributions Tax Surplus. Yes. And what sort is approval from the board to pay the amount of the surplus to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And in the year ending 30 June 2012, the surplus was $8.1 million? Yes. And each year, at least until this year, SPSL, that is the trustee, has approved the payment of the surplus over to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And in this year, there has been a proposal put to the board to pay over the surplus to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Sorry, when you say in this year, in the... This year, in 2018, there's been a proposal put to the board to pay over the surplus to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? No, not in 2018. Let's just make sure... We'll come back to that in a moment. Can we go to page dot triple zero nine of that document? So this is a services deed between Asteron Portfolio Services Limited and Asteron Life Limited. Yes. And Asteron Portfolio Services Limited is the name of what is now Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited? Yes. And Asteron Life Limited is the name of what is now Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And if we go to page dot zero zero one three. You see, this is an agreement to provide additional services? Yes. And the fee that is payable in Clause 3 for the additional services is an amount equal to the balance of the contributions tax provision at the end of the relevant financial year? Yes. And so the agreement that had been made between these companies some years ago was that whatever surplus there would 
whatever surplus there was would be paid over to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited in exchange for what are described as additional services? Yes. And if we then go back to page dot zero zero one one. We see additional services are defined to mean the services listed in schedules one to six. You see that? Yes. And if we then go to page dot zero zero one eight. See, these are the Schedule 1 administration services. Yes. And these appear to be effectively every administration service that would be involved in administering a superannuation fund. It goes on for three pages. I'm not sure if it's every administration service. I see. But it seems like it would cover a lot of the services. Do you agree? Yes, it does cover an, a number of services. And then if we go to Schedule 2, which is dot zero zero two one. So Schedule 2 is Fund Accounting Services. Do you agree? Yes. And if we go to Schedule 4, Schedule 3 seems to have been left out of this copy. Let's, Commissioner, I'll tend to that document and bring up a better copy of this. So this is the 2013 paper. So the board submission of 18 April 13, SUN 1506 0018 0001 is exhibit 5.166. And then can we bring up SUN.1501.0005.5563? So this is the 2017 board submission. See that, Mr Pinto? Yes. And then if we go to page dot five five seven six. This is again a, the same services deed we were looking at a moment ago? Yes. And if we go to page dot 5594, this is Schedule 1 again, the administration services. Yes. And I think I suggested before the administration services take three pages. In fact, they're five pages, I'd suggest. Does that sound right? Or you're not sure? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm looking at the first page. Have you looked at this agreement before, Mr Pinto? Yes. Are you familiar with this agreement? I'm not close to the agreement, but I have seen it before. Are you, I'm sorry, I may have misunderstood your role. Are you the head of the Office of the Trustee? Yes. And this is an agreement by which SLPL agrees to provide what are defined as the additional services to 
the company for which you are the head of the office of the trustee? Yes. Is there some monitoring that is done of the provision of the additional services? Yes, annually there is a submission to the trustee board which details the additional services that have been provided. This document that we're looking at now, this is the submission, isn't it? If we go back to the first page, dot five five six three. Yes. That's the type of submission you're talking about? Yes. This is the one for made in June 2017 in respect of the 2016 financial year? Yes. All right. If we just go back to the agreement, we've looked already at fund accounting. If we go to dot 5601. This is Schedule 3, the investment services. Yes. And then we go over the page, Schedule 4.5602. This is compliance services. It includes, you'll see at the top of the page, ensuring the services are conducted in a manner which complies with the relevant law, the trust deed, compliance procedures, current accounting practices and standards and other applicable legislation unless the trustee and the life company specifically agree otherwise. You see yes. that? And if we go back to page dot five five eight two. <clears throat> See the definition of services, which is the additional services plus any administration services provided to the trustees, to the trustee under the policies. Yes. Yes. And the policies are those life insurance policies that we referred to earlier, through which investments are made by SPSL. I'm sorry, I said SPSL, are made by SLSL, Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. Yes. And if we go then to page dot five six zero four. So this is Schedule 5, which sets out other services. This includes creating and maintaining an up-to-date fund administration guide. You see that? Yes. And then if we go to page 5606. I'm sorry, 5605. This is specified expenses that are to be paid by the life company. Yes. And the life company is Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. So that it would seem like what Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited has agreed to do is to pay all of these expenses, which include expenses in relation to general fund administration expenses? Yes. And promotional expenses?
Yes. And professional costs? Yes. And the preparation and dispatch of annual reports and annual member statements? Yes. And audit fees? Yes. And APRA fees? Yes. And APRA levies? Yes. And you'll recall the definition of additional services is the services listed in schedules one to six inclusive, including payment of the specified expenses. Would you like to see that again? Bring up dot five five eight zero. You see that? Yes. So can I suggest on the face of this agreement, it would seem to mean Suncorp Life and Superannuation, I'm sorry, yes, Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is going to provide all of the administration services and pay all the costs of running the fund in exchange for the tax surplus. Yes. Is that what's happened? Y yes, so the, the, the life company has um, provided these services in return for the contributions tax surplus. And are there any other services that need to be provided other than those provided pursuant to this agreement? I'm not sure if there are any additional services that need to be provided. Well, one way that the Office of the Trustee would know this, can I suggest, is if it had some sort of reporting or oversight over what services are provided to it by its related companies. Yes, so reporting is provided on a quarterly basis to the trustee board, which would encompass these services which are disclosed in this agreement. And so is there a monitoring, for example, of satisfactory service delivery? Yes. And are there service level requirements? Yes. And do they apply specifically in relation to the additional services as defined in the deed? Yes. And do those services provided as additional services under the deed encompass all of the services that are needed to administer the super funds? Look, I'm not sure if they encompass all of the services. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that they would. Well, again, one way can I suggest that the trustee would know that was if there was some division between or identification of other services, either that SLSL provide, I'm sorry, SPSL provided to itself in order to administer the trust fund, or that it received from other companies to administer the trust fund. 
So there is reporting provided to the trustee on other services which are provided to its members. I'm sorry, can you just say that again? You said SPSL provided to its, oh, I'm sorry, that's my question. So there is reporting provided to the trustee on other services which are provided to its members? Yes. Provided by whom to its members? Um, so SPSL has a number of service providers of which SLSL is one. Um, it has, for example, a service provider which um, provides investment management services. Yes. Um, it has a provider which provides um, um, inbound banking services. So SLSL is one provider, but it has a number of other providers who also report to the board on a quarterly basis. Are there any other providers of administration services? Yes, SPSL provides administration services to 75% of its membership. SLSL provides administration services to the remaining 25%. Now that's now since there's been this rebalancing of the division between the life insurance policies and the investments managed through the group trust. Is that right? Yes. Before that rebalancing occurred, more of the administration was supplied by SLSL? Yes, prior to the recent transfer, SLSL was administering 45% of the membership and SPSL was administering the remaining 55%. And just so I can make sure I've understood though, has there been some change in the actual funds? That is, back in, if we go to page dot five five seven nine. You see recital A, the trustee is the trustee of the Astron Life Superannuation Fund Optimum Superannuation Master Plan and the Tyndall Superannuation Plan? Yes. Do those three funds still exist? No. Do any of them still exist? These three funds became divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust. Yes. And when did that occur? in 2008. All right, and then as a consequence, not straight away, but eventually there was a deed of amendment to the services deed? Yes. And if we bring up page dot five six zero seven. So this is the deed of amendment. You can see by now the names have changed of the entities. Yes. And if we go to page dot five six zero eight. See this is dated the twenty second of August two thousand and fourteen. Yes. And it refers to the trustee in respect of certain superannuation funds. Yes. And so that I understand, by the time this deed was entered into, those funds didn't exist anymore?
the Astron, what was the Astron Life Superannuation Fund, effectively became the Suncorp Master Trust. I understand. Was it was it like this? Did the Astron Life Superannuation Fund become the Suncorp Master Trust, and the other two funds were effectively moved into that fund by successive fund transfer? Yes. And so. To go back to the answer you gave before, where you indicated that none of the funds existed anymore, that's not quite accurate. One of them continues to exist, and the other two have become divisions of that one fund. Yes. And so the present state of affairs is that Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited has agreed to provide the administration services in relation to what is now the Suncorp Master Trust? Yes. And it's agreed to accept as payment. I finished that answer, actually. But in respect of um, these three divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust. Oh, now where does that, where do we see that? I need a copy of the agreement. Commissioner, can I, just given the time, can I suggest that Mr Pinto have overnight to think about the answer to this question and yes, come back and answer it in the morning? Overnight, Mr Pinto, if uh, Mr Kirk and those instructing him can provide you with a copy of the agreement, you can uh, uh, have time to look at it, think about it, and uh, we'll return to that uh, tomorrow morning at 9.30. Thank you, Commissioner. 9.30 tomorrow, Mr Pinto. Yes. Evidence of Mr. Pinto. Pinto, would you be good enough to come back into the witness box, please? Yes, Mr Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Pinto, you recall yesterday afternoon when we finished, you were going to go away and have a look at the amendment to the additional services, deed. Yes. And you recall that the issue that we had been discussing was whether the additional services are in relation to the whole of the Suncorp Master Trust or just three divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust? Yes. And you recall that you had indicated yesterday afternoon that you believed the additional services were only in relation to three particular divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust? Yes. And you recall you were going to go away and look at the deed and see whether there was something in the deed that reflected your belief? Yes. And did you look at the deed? Yes. And did you find anything in the deed that reflected your belief? No. And do you still believe that the additional services relate only to three divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust? No. And why do you no longer believe that? The effect of the... Um, when, when the Astron Life Superfund became the Suncorp Master Trust, the, um, the deed then applied to the Suncorp Master Trust. Can I put that back to you and see whether you agree? What you're saying is the deed applied to the entirety of the pre-existing Asteron superannuation trust? Yes. And that Asteron trust became the Suncorp Master Trust? Yes. 
and therefore the deed must apply to the entirety of the Suncorp Master Trust. Yes. And can we bring up SUN.1501.0005.5563? While that's coming up, Mr Pinto, did it surprise you to realise overnight that this deed provided for services in relation to the entirety of the Suncorp Master Trust and not just three divisions? No, on reflection, it does, by virtue of the Astron Life Superfund becoming the Suncorp Master Trust, it applies to the Suncorp Master Trust. Yes, but consider these things. Tell me if you agree. You're the head of the office of the trustee. Yes. This is an agreement by which a related company, Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited, provides the additional services to Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited. Yes. You didn't realise until overnight that those services were provided in relation to the entirety of the Suncorp Master Trust rather than just some divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust? I think, um, by way of context, at a practical level, SLSL provides administration services to the three former super funds, which are now divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust. So to the members of those, um, of those divisions, the administration services for members of the remaining divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust are provided by SPSL in a practical sense. I want to try to understand your answer. The additional services, which is a defined term in the deed, do you understand that they now relate to the entirety of the Suncorp Master Trust? Or in practical terms, do they only relate to three divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust? In practical terms, they apply to the three divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust. That's your understanding? Yes. Can we go to page dot five five seven two? <coughs> so this is appendix five to the board submission that we were looking at yesterday afternoon. Yes. And do you see halfway down the page, there's a note with the numeral four and then FUA? Yes. And FUA stands for funds under administration? Yeah. And do you see that the words written under that heading are the additional services provided relate to the SMT, that's the Suncorp Master Trust? Yes. In its entirety and is not limited to the SLSL, that's the Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. Yes. Administered divisions, hence using the total SMT FUA is considered appropriate. Yes. So this explanation in the board paper is different from your understanding? I think, I think what I'm saying is that these additional services, whilst they do apply to the Suncorp Master Trust, SPSL, uh, SLSL is not the only um, administrator providing ser administration services to the Suncorp Master Trust. If you look on this page, do you see at the top of the page, 
it says administration fees paid by the Suncorp Master Trust to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And you see then below that it shows those fees as a percentage of the administered divisions? Yes. And let me make sure we agree, the administration fees are different from and in addition to the tax surplus paid in exchange for the additional services? Yes. So Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited provides administration services to the Suncorp Master Trust in respect of the three divisions that it administers? Yes. And we see in FY14 that administration fee amounted to 1.1% of the assets in those three divisions? Yes. And in FY15, that administration fee amounted to 0.99% of the assets in those three divisions? Yes. And in FY16, <coughs> that administration fee amounted to 0.92% of the assets in those divisions? Yes. And then for any other divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust, there are administration fees received by other Suncorp entities? Yes. Not Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited? No, by Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited. I see, Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited performs its own administration of the other divisions? Yes. And it retains the administration fees for those other divisions? Yes. But on top of that, what we see in this document is that there is also <coughs> the fees for what are defined as the additional services. Yes. And that fee is the tax surplus? Yes. And that fee is paid, or that tax surplus is paid thus far each year in its entirety over to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. So that the net effect appears to be that for, say, FY16, a member of one of the three divisions administered by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited would end up paying a 1.05% administration fee. Sorry, that was in relation to? The three divisions that Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited administers. And, and sorry, which year was, was it? In FY16. 0.92% plus 0.13%? Yes. And that seems very high, but that's actually lower than it was two years earlier because two years earlier, a member of one of those three divisions would have ended up paying a 1.27% administration fee. The effect of the um, additional services would equate to that, yes. But because of the way that the fee is paid for the additional services, that wouldn't be obvious to members? No. Because when they read the product disclosure statements that are put out by Suncorp, they don't identify the amount or percentage paid for these additional services? No. And when Suncorp does its reporting to APRA, does it report under some category this amount for the tax surplus that is paid for the additional services? 
look, I don't know. Are you responsible for the reporting to APRA? No, I'm not. Who is responsible for the reporting to APRA, for the superannuation trust? Our finance function. And you haven't discussed with them how they report that to APRA? No. And can I suggest one of the other things that doesn't occur is that there is no attempt to map how the defined additional services fit with any other administration services that are provided by either Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited or Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. So I think in the annual in the annual reporting to the board, there is um, disclosure of the certainly the additional services that have been provided, and there is consideration of the the other services that have been provided by by the. Um, to the members during the year. Perhaps if we take this in stages. You made the point that Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited provides administration services in respect of the three divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust that Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited administers? Yes. What is the agreement pursuant to which those services are provided? So, so the agreement is contained within the policies that have been issued by SLSL to to SPSL. All right, now we... We issued a notice, well, the Commission issued a notice, the Commissioner signed a notice in order to understand this. Can we bring up one of those policies? Can we bring up sun.1505.0003.0066? While that's coming up, have you yourself looked at these policies, Mr Pinto? I have. Okay. And you've considered what services are contracted to be provided? Yes. And is that something you did recently for the purpose of giving evidence or something that you've done on earlier occasions as part of your role as the head of the Office of the Trustee? Look, I have done it recently, but also on prior occasions. So you see what we've got up on the screen is a group insurance policy. Yes. And it's issued by what was at that time Astron Life Limited to Astron Portfolio Services <coughs> Limited? Yes. And as we agreed yesterday, Astron Life is now Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And Astron Portfolio Services Limited is now Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited? Yes. And The way in which this policy, and we understand all of the relevant policies work, is that the assets of the relevant division 
of the Suncorp Master Trust are invested pursuant to these policies with Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? Yes. And then, in turn, they are invested in, I think, the number four statutory fund. Or at least in this case, it's the number four statutory fund. Yes. And... If we go to page dot zero zero eight two, so this is the part of the policy dealing with investment benefit. Is this the part that sets out the administration services? In part, yes. Are there other parts of the policy that set out the administration services? Yes. Are you able to tell us in this part where the administration services are set out? Commissioner, um, one page is up on screen. The witness has been asked about what he knows about different parts of the document. It would be fairer in my respectful submission if he was provided with a hard copy of the document. Oh, I'm quite happy for that, Commissioner. Do you have a hard copy, Mr Kirk? I don't. We'll get a copy produced, Commissioner. Let me, while that's coming to you, Mr Pinto, let me understand the position. The policy sets out, as you recall it, certain administration services. Yes. And does it set out how Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is to be paid for those services? Well, Commissioner, again, the witness is being asked details of the document where he doesn't have the document. And nor, so far as I know, does he have the power to scroll through it on the screen? You can have my copy. Yes. Did you find the part you were looking for, Mr Pinto? Perhaps if we take it in stages. Did yes. you find so, the part so which... If I look at part five, for example... That's page dot zero zero eight one. Yes. 
it details the administration of insurance claims. Yes. Um, in addition to those which were disclosed earlier. When you say it details the administration of insurance claims, it's just setting out the requirements for payment of a claim, isn't it? Yes, it does, but the way I interpret it is that it does um, provide provide guidance on how that claim the claims will be administered. Can we agree on this? It is not something that sets out or specifies services to be provided by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited to Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited. Well, I think it does in that it's, it specifies how SLSL will consider a claim. All right, on your view that it sets out services, does it provide for a, an amount to be paid for those services? No. Now, is there any other part of the policy that you want to point to as setting out the administration services to be provided by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited to Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited in respect of the three divisions? This, this particular policy is in relation to a particular division, the optimum division. Yes. Within the Suncorp Master Trust. But there are policies that are issued in respect of other divisions of the Suncorp Master Trust. This, though, is one of the three divisions that yes. you're referring to? So for each division, there is a policy, yes? There would be a number of policies that have been issued over time. Are you saying this policy doesn't identify the services for the optimum division, but you think there's some other policy that does identify the services? No, this policy does. This policy does identify the services? Yes. Right, so we've looked at claims. That's in relation to insurance claims. Is there some other part of the policy that you want to point to as identifying the administration services provided by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited to Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited in respect of the optimum division? Yes, part six. Okay. Can we go to page dot zero zero eight two? So this explains that the, how the benefits are to be invested and how contributions are to be handled? Yes. And it explains that contributions which are paid over to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited are going to be invested under or in units that are issued out of the statutory fund number four? Yes. And it provides that 
all the usual things will happen if you're issuing units for investment, which is you'll sell them and buy, or enable the selling and buying of them and you'll value them? Yes. And if we go to page dot zero zero eight four, you see in six point nine it provides that certain expenses and investment fees are deducted directly from the investment options. Yes. And it identifies the particular types of fees and expenses, which are expenses incurred in, in acquiring, <laughs> realising and valuing investments in the investment option, applicable federal and state taxes, duties and charges, the investment fees paid to the investment manager, any other costs in incurred in obtaining investment advice? Yes. And it says costs directly associated with the preparation and issue of customer information brochures and associated documents for the plan and this policy may also be deducted from the investment options. Yes. And the investment options are, as we understand it, the units in the investments made as part of statutory fund number four. Yes. Now, do you say that's the administration services that are provided by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited to Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited? These are the services that are specified in this policy? Yes. Yes. Do we agree that it doesn't provide for a payment by Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited <coughs> to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited in exchange for administration services? Look, I'm not sure, um, based on um, my review of this document. Attend to that document, Commissioner. Astron Life Limited Group Insurance Policy, are we a date? Mr. Hodge. The policy start date is the 11th of December 2006, Commissioner. 11 December 2006, SUN 1505 0003 0066 is Exhibit 5.167. In any event, if we go back to SUN 1501.0005.5563. and go to page dot five five seven two. So the figures at the top of the page where it's described as administration fees paid by Suncorp Master Trust to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. You see those? Yes. As I understood your earlier evidence, those are the fees paid pursuant to the, the policy we were just looking at? Pursuant to the disclosure that's issued to members. Now, I just want to be careful about this. Suncorp Portfolio Services, when it issues a PDS, will tell members that it's going to charge an administration fee. Yes. And 
is the point you're now making that it pays a proportion of that administration fee to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited? No, I think what I'm saying is that the administration fee, fees relating to this policy are paid directly out of the Suncorp Master Trust to SLSL. Yes, let's take it in stages. The members are told that there will be an administration fee charged. Yes. And that fee is paid out of the trust to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. Yes. But Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is not the trustee of the trust. No. The trustee of the trust is Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited. Yes. It must be Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited that is taking the fee from the trust. Look, I'm unsure of the, of the exact mechanics of how it works. In any event, part of the administration fee that is charged to members is paid to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited. Yes. And that part is the $15.6 million in FY 2016. Yes. And that fee is paid to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited pursuant to what agreement? The, the policy that's been issued by SLSL to SPSL. So that must mean that the $15.6 million is the fee for the services being provided pursuant to not just this policy, but all of the policies issued in respect of the three divisions? Yes. So, it would be possible, do you agree, to report on what those services are and what the value of those services is? Yes. And it would be possible, you would think, for a trustee to be able to point to a clause of a contract which says, this is how the amount of the fee will be determined. Look, I think in this instance, it's the, the relevant, the relevant uh, document that outlines the fee is the product disclosure statement that's issued to members. Now, listen to my question again, please. I'll say it back to you. It would be possible, you would think, for a trustee to be able to point to a clause of a contract which says this is how the amount of the fee, the administration fee, paid to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited will be determined. And I, and I think that's, that's in the product disclosure statement. You're saying it's not for the trustee to say, do we have an agreement with Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited to pay this fee to them? And how is that fee calculated? I think, I think what I'm saying is that is one option. Um, but in our, in our instance, the fee, the administration fee is, dis is disclosed in the product disclosure statements. On your view then, Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is providing administration services to the trust under two kinds of agreements. The first kind is the additional services deed. The second kind are these insurance policies. Yes. 
and they must be agreements for two different separate services or separate groups of services? Yes. And would you not expect or do you not expect when a submission is made to the board for the board to be told how the services under one agreement map against the services provided under another agreement? So I think the board um, is provided with detail regarding the, the services which are, the additional services which are provided, but also the, um, the services which are provided under the, under the policies. Now, when you say information about the services provided under the policies, how is that information provided to the board? Uh, through, the, through the annual submission. This submission that we're yes. looking at, the submission for the payment of the tax surplus. Yes. Can we go to page dot five five seven zero? So you see this is Appendix 3. It's setting out the additional services composition. Yes. Is this the most detail that the board receives about the services? In relation to the additional services? Yes. You see the second sentence, it is noted there is some overlap with services provided in return for the administration fees, but that in total the amount received by Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited from the surplus and administration fees is less than the amount it has spent. Yes. And you see in the third box for the schedule 3O, which is calculating the applicable unit price? Yes. And that seems to be the highest identified expense for the year, which is about $2.7 million. Yes. And weren't you making the point before that calculating the applicable unit price is part of the services that is provided under the insurance policy? <coughs> yes. And so it would seem on its face like Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is recovering the cost of calculating the applicable unit price out of the units. That's how the investment policy says it works. Yes. And then Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is being paid a proportion of the administration fees that are charged to members. Yes. And then Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited is receiving the tax surplus justified on the basis that it's incurred a cost of about $2.7 million for calculating the applicable unit price. Yes. And do you, as the head of the Office of the Trustee, regard this as a satisfactory situation? Look, I'm not close to how that particular figure was, was calculated, but the, the purpose of this schedule is really to provide the trustee with guidance that value has been delivered in the provision of the additional services. So it's not intended 
to encompass all expenses that have been incurred in the provision of the additional services. Do you agree with me that one way that the trustee might satisfy itself in relation to administration expenses is to A, have a contract with an entity which says you will provide these services to the trustee in exchange for a fee and B, calculate whether the fee due under the contract is payable or not and C, disclose to the members fully what the administration expense is that is going to be charged to them in order to pay that fee? Yes, it it's certainly um, is um, a, a, um, a, a clear approach in terms of disclosing the administration arrangements. And Suncorp doesn't do any of those things? It, ha it hasn't done that to date, but I don't believe that that in any way um, indicates that members have not received value for the additional services that have been provided. But there's no practical way for the trustee to know whether that is or is not the case, is there? As part of this submission, the trustee receives detail regarding the additional services that have been provided in addition to this table. But on the face of it, the member's paying twice. Isn't that the position? The member's paying for the calculation of applicable unit price because the unit price is diminished. Is that right? Uh, look, I'm not sure exactly how that how that has been calculated. Um, it may well be that you know it relates to um, certain costs that haven't that haven't been charged separately. Well, Mr. Pinto, the difficulty is if you're not certain of it, uh, how can you be certain that the member is not paying twice? <coughs> yes, I don't know. And I just need to make sure I've understood the answer you gave about detail. Can we go back a page to page dot five five six five? So the board is told how the surplus emerges? Yes. And each year KPMG or whoever the accountant is checks the calculation of the surplus? Yes. And then if we go to page dot five five six six. There's this explanation of the scope of how the values of the additional services are substantiated. And then if we go to 5567, this is where it said there's member benefit and value <coughs> from projects that have been implemented. Yes. And then if we go to 5568, this is where it's explaining further the implementation of these projects.
Yes. And then if we go to 5569. This is where it sets out some further <coughs> general explanations into the service in relation to the services, including that daily administration services are part of the scope of the additional services. Yes. And then if we go to 5570. This is the appendix we've already looked at. This is, I'd suggest, the only detail that is set out as to how the supposed value of the additional services has been arrived at. Yes. And then if we go to 5571. This is an explanation of the methodology by which a value has been attributed internally to those additional services. And then if we go to five, oh, I'm sorry, just on that, and the way in which the value is attributed is by using Suncorp Group's expenses attribution rules. Yes. And then if we go to 5572. This is again the page we've already looked at, which is setting out what the amount of the fees are and then an attempt to compare this practice with competitors' practices. And to understand the comparison with competitors' practices, if we just go over the next page to page dot five five seven three. What's done is to note where different entities are charging explicit levies for regulatory I'm sorry, explicit levies to cover the cost or supposedly cover the cost of making changes to meet regulatory requirements or to build up their operational risk financial requirement reserve. Yes. And those comparisons, can I suggest, are quite different from what Suncorp is doing, which is retaining the tax surplus and paying it to a related group entity without disclosing to the members what the amount is or the percentage is. Whilst the amount and percentage aren't disclosed, uh, Suncorp does disclose to members that um, 
amounts that are held in the contributions tax surplus may be used to um, meet the fund's expenses. Attend to that document, Commissioner. Board submission 22, June 17, SUN 1501 0055556. Oh, Commissioner, I'm sorry, I'm told it's been exhibited already to Mr Pinto's statement. It's so in. I apologise. Very well. Just so we understand what members are told, can we bring up SUN.1504.0001.3195? Mr Hodge. Yes, it's sun.1504.0001.3195. So this is Suncorp's everyday super product disclosure statement issued on the 13th of February 2018. Yes. And if we go to page dot three two zero five. We've just been trying to understand how the tax surplus point is disclosed. You see that there's a paragraph that's third from the top, which is all fees in this PDS are quoted on a gross of income tax basis and include GST and stamp duty where applicable. The fees are also quoted less any available reduced input tax credits and are not reduced by any income tax that the trustee may be able to claim or any income tax deduction available to the trustee through an interposed vehicle. Yes. We're not sure, so you, you tell me if we've misunderstood. Is, is that how it's disclosed or is it disclosed in some other way? No, I believe it's disclosed in a separate, separate section. Okay. Um, I believe it's in the product, product guide. Oh, it's not in the product disclosure statement. No. Okay. But if you then, if a member go, I'm sorry, tender the product disclosure statement. Suncorp Everyday Super PDS 13 February 18, SUN 1504 0001 3195, Exhibit 5.168. If we bring up SUN.1504.0001.3211. Got a copy of the document there, Mr. Pinto. No, no, I mean you're looking at the at the document. I'm looking at the Suncorp Brighter Super Product Guide. Could I? I think you've got another one there, which just so we can follow it over. Can you look at the Suncorp Everyday Super Product Guide? I think you should have that as well. Um, you're not sure. Which tab is it? 
wait for your solicitors to tell you. But if we bring up on the screen sun.1504.0001.3211, I think you've got, if you look at tab 24, you've got a product disclosure for a different product, which is the choice product, but I'm told they're in identical terms. And if you go to page 29 of your document, other pages are different. I'll, we've got a spare copy, or my friend has a spare copy for you, Mr Pinto, of the Everyday Super Reference Guide. Hopefully that will come up on the screen shortly. And Commissioner, Mr Kirk has kindly offered one to you. Thank you. So this is the Suncorp Everyday Super Guide. It's I think it's in total 59 pages long. Yes. And if you go to page 29 of that document, the second column of text on that page, there's an underlined heading which is expense recovery and reserves. Yes. And it says, we can recover any expenses and costs incurred in the administration and management of the Suncorp Master Trust, of which Suncorp Everyday Super is part. The fund holds a general expense and tax reserve which may be used to meet the expenses associated with the administration, management and operation of the fund. Any excess amounts are retained within the reserve to meet future costs. No expenses or costs incurred are recovered from any investment in the Suncorp Life Stage Fund. Yes. Is that intended to be disclosure of retaining the tax surplus and paying it over? There's something else maybe on page 31. I wonder if this is it. In the second column of text on page 31, there's a heading which is tax and government charges. And in the third paragraph under that heading, there's this sentence. We retain any excess amount deducted for contributions taxed within the fund and may use this amount for authorised purposes, including to cover expenses we incur in the proper administration, management or maintenance of the fund. Yes. Is that the disclosure that you were thinking of? Yes. Do you think there's any sensible possibility that a member of the Suncorp Superannuation Fund would understand that Suncorp is paying the entirety of the tax surplus every year to Suncorp Life and Superannuation Limited in exchange for the additional services based on that disclosure? Not based on that disclosure. Based on any disclosure? Not that I can think of, no. Do you agree with me No, I withdraw that. I tender that document, Commissioner. 
Duncorp Everyday Super Product Guide, uh, SUN 1504 0001 3211, Exhibit 5.169. Now, if the amount being taken for the tax surplus would was fully disclosed, the effect would be that Suncorp's administration fees would rise? Sorry, I should put that actually a different way. The effect would be that the disclosed administration fees would rise. I think, I think it would depend on obviously how the amount would be disclosed, in, whether it would be in the form of a single amount that is paid um, or whether in some other form do you agree that the administration fees charged by Suncorp are already compared to its competitors high? I'm not sure. Do you agree that they could not truthfully be dis described as low fees? Again, um, I'm not responsible for the disclosure of our fees, um, so I'm not able to comment on that. Suncorp's administration on um, Suncorp's fees for its super product had been described as low fees on its website? Yes. The Commission issued you with a rubric to explain what the basis was for Suncorp's claim that the fees were low? Yes. Suncorp is now removing the claim that the fees are low from its website? It has been removed, yes. And that's because Suncorp recognises that its fees are not low? No. Why has it removed them? So as to align the wording that is contained in the product disclosure statement with what's disclosed to members on the website. And what is the relevant wording in the product disclosure statement? Uh, that, that the fees are competitive. And how has it been determined that the fees are competitive? Look, again, I'm not responsible for um, the pricing of the product, um, so I'm not able to comment. Are you responsible for or do you have knowledge about the ADA transition plan implemented by Suncorp? Yes. As we understand it, there was one transition plan formulated in about 2013. Yes. And that plan was that the ADAs would all be transitioned in 2017? By, by, by 2017, yes. Now, just so I understand, you think the plan back in 2013 was that they would be transitioned by 2017, not in 2017? Look, I wasn't responsible for the development of the plan um, and, and wasn't in the role of the OST at the time. Um, so I'd need to look at a copy to... to let, me, let me put it in a different way. Has the transition plan ever been updated since 2013? Not to my knowledge, no. Your recollection is that what the transition plan provided for in 2013 was that Suncorp would ensure that it had transitioned the ADAs over to my super by the 1st of July 2017. Again, I haven't... Um, I'll show you. Can we bring up sun.1501.0004.5485?
So this is the My Super Transition Plan? Yes. Have you reviewed it in the course of preparing to give evidence? Yes. And if we go to page dot five four eight seven. We see this transition plan has been put in place so that Suncorp Portfolio Services Limited can ensure that from 1 July 2017, all eligible beneficiaries in the funds for which it is trustee will have their accrued default amounts held in a MySuper compliant superannuation product. Yes. And do you recall whether the plan otherwise sets out a process for how the transition will occur? Uh, it would be helpful to have a copy of that document. We'll get a copy handed over to you. Perhaps even just focus on this question, Mr Pinto. Does the transition plan set out when the transition will start? does talk to identifying all accrued default amounts and and then which page are you looking at Mr Pinter on page three under the objectives that's page oh this is the page we're looking at yes yep um, so it ident yeah, talks to identifying the accrued default amounts from time to time between 30 September 2013 and the earlier of 1 July 2017 and the date of transition of all accrued default amounts? Yes. Does it set out a plan for when the transition will start? On my review of the document, I can't see an actual start date. Right, I tender that document, Commissioner. My super transition plan is UN 1501-0045485, Exhibit 5.170. Commissioner, I note that that version of the document has marking up, suggesting it is not the final version of the document. Well, your document, your side's document, Mr Kirk, you can perhaps uh, uh, sort that out. Yes, we will seek to do that, identify that in the course of the week. No, now. Oh. Yes. I'm told, Commissioner, that the final version is at sun.1501.0064.0768. Does he have the final version? <coughs> Sorry, does he have the final version? No, no, it's the same. I'm content to sort that out later.
Let me show you something else from your second statement, Mr Pinto. Can we bring up sun.1508.0007.4238? Mr Pinto, do you agree one of the issues for Suncorp with the transition from ADAs to MySuper was that commissions are not paid on MySuper products? No. You don't think that was a concern? Certainly um, not, not to my knowledge, no. You only joined the Office of the Trustee in 2016? Yes. But you've exhibited mm. documents from 2013 to your statement? Yes. And you're saying, as far as you were aware, no one ever said to you that a concern for Suncorp was the effect that the transition to my super would have on commissions? No. If you go to well, look at this email, which is exhibited to your second statement, this is an email you'll see from Mr Cogman. You've seen the unredacted email, so you know it goes to an advisor. Yes. And you see it's sent on the 29th of October 2013? Yes. And you see there's a heading in the middle which is key summary. Yes. And you see the second bullet point is my super, I'm sorry, the first bullet point is to explain that for choice members where they've made an investment decision, grandfathered commissions will still be paid on insurance and funds under administration. Yes. But the second bullet point explains that for my super and accrued default account members, no insurance or funds under administration commissions are paid on the my super account. Yes. But ADA insurance and funds under administration commission is paid until 2017. Yes. And do you agree with me that would suggest that as at October 2013, Suncorp was intending that it would not transition ADAs to my super until 2017? No. You don't agree? No. Why not? On my interpretation of that, that sentence, it's simply um, providing factual information I don't believe it's um, making necessarily a representation to the advisor that Suncorp will continue to pay commission up until 2017. It's saying commissions will be paid on ADA insurance and fund un funds under administration until 2017. Yes. And that must mean that the ADAs will not change over to become, to go into the My Super product until 2017. No, I disagree. I, I think it's, it's simply indicating that there is a time period up until 2017 where any amounts that have not been transferred will continue to be paid commission. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying it's not, it's not promising that ADAs won't be transferred until 2017. It's just saying if they haven't been transferred until 2017, grandfather commission will still be paid on them. Yes. And in fact, Suncorp didn't transition its ADAs until 2017. No. It did it in June of 2017? Yes. It was it the 9th of June 2017 that it commenced the transition? Yes. And finished it about the 19th of June? Yes. And you see further down on the page, action required, we recommend that you call or write to your key My Super customers and encourage them to make an investment decision?
Yes. And as is apparent from what's been set out in the key summary, if an investment decision is made, then the member will go into a choice product and continue to pay commission. Yes. The only purpose of this email, which you have exhibited, seems to be to encourage an advisor to take steps that will maintain grandfathered commission. No, I disagree. What do you think is the purpose of this email? I think it's encouraging advisors to make contact with, with members so that they are actively engaged with their superannuation. It's encouraging the advisor to obtain an investment decision. I think it's, it's um, recommending that the advisor encourage the member to make an investment decision. Yes. It's not recommending that the advisor compare whether the My Super product is better for the member or the Choice product is better for the member? Look, I'm not sure what, you know. Well, we can see it's not doing that. Yeah, I'm not sure that it that it's not um, necessarily saying compare the my super offering against the choice offering. It's simply saying we recommend you call or write to your to your members and encourage them to make an investment decision. Which will mean that, they will no longer be a my super member. Well, um, that may be one possibility, but they may well decide to um, be a my super member. All right. If we go to sun.1508.0003.0934, <coughs> one of the other services that Suncorp provided to its advisors was to give them a list of clients who are impacted by the My Super changes? Yes. So that they would know which clients are going to transition from My Super, over, I'm sorry, are going to transition into the My Super product unless an investment decision is made? Yes. And do you say that wasn't done for the purpose of encouraging those advisors to cause their clients to make investment decisions so that the advisor could still be paid commission? I object. The uh, question goes to the intent of the person. It's fine, I withdraw it. Can we go to sun.1508.0007.5062? So this is another chain of emails that you've exhibited to your statement. Yes. It's a chain of emails between Mr Thiel of Suncorp and an advisor.
Yes. And you see in the middle of the page, the advisor emails Mr Thiel on the 16th of September and says, I understood from today's meeting that we will be getting a segmented list that highlights those who haven't made an investment determination and as a result need to yet opt out of my super? Yes. And then you see that Mr Thiel's response at the top is to say he's obtained a data file that identifies which customers have processed an investment switch since March 2006. <coughs> Yes. And then in the next paragraph, the 42 customers who have completed a switch are deemed to be outside the MySuper regime and as such their account will not change 1 January 2014. The remaining members are in the sites of MySuper. Yes. And when you reviewed this email and exhibited it to your statement, did you think that this email suggests that Suncorp was encouraging advisors to cause their clients to make investment decisions rather than go into my super? No. What did you draw from this email about what Suncorp had been doing? On my, my interpretation, um, the, um, the advisor is being provided with factual information regarding <coughs> those customers who have completed a switch. The people who are on these emails and doing it, this, sending them out, they're not part of the office of the trustee? No. They're part of some other part of Suncorp? Yes. What part of Suncorp are they from? The intermediaries team. Is that the intermediaries team that deals with advisors? Yes. So. The intermediaries team is set up to assist the advisors? Yes. And build relationships with the advisors? Yes. And look after the interests of the advisors? No. Not to look after the interests of the advisors? No. Just to build relationships with them? Yes. And so the intermediaries team had obtained data from the trustee about investment decisions or the absence of investment decisions and was then using that to provide these lists to the advisors? It was providing, providing lists to the advisors, yes. In order to provide those lists, it would need data from the trustee? Yes. So the trustee must have provided the data? Yes. But the trustee, presumably you weren't there, but there's no reporting that you've seen back to the trustee explaining what's being done with that? No. You've been at the office of the trustee since the beginning of 2016? From February of 2016, yes. How many people are in the office of the trustee? There are three. And so one of them is you? Yes. And who are the other two people? There are two trustee advisors. And do they work solely for the office of the trustee? Yes. Do they report to you? Yes. I see. So it's you and you have two people who assist you in order to advise the trustee? Yes. Commissioner, I don't have any further questions for Mr Pinto. Yes, yes Mr Kirk. No re-examination. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr Pinto. You may step down. Commissioner, when I uh, tendered the statements yesterday, I forgot expressly to mention that I also sought to tender the exhibits to the statements. May I take that as also tendered? Yes. May I please the Commission? And Commissioner, I should just indicate something else which Mr Kirk and I discussed before Mr Pinto resumed this morning, which is there may be some documents that Suncorp would say they mean what they say. It's not necessary for Mr Pinto yes. to look at them and we've agreed that we'll just review those and tender them at some stage. Yes. Yes. No, 
Uh, Mr Hodge, where to from here? Commissioner, Ms Diaz is taking the next witness. Would you like to take... Well, we're changing... Break. Uh, we're changing council teams and... If I come back at five past 11. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes.